Well, Coach, thanks for joining us. Let's talk first of all about the game against Delta State this past uh, Thursday night. It's been a while mm -hmm. now since we played the Statesman. Uh, Choctaws lost that ball game. It was a four-point game at the half, and then early in the third quarter there was a, a sequence where Stephen Bradley got injured, and then there was a muffed kick return, and Delta State scored real quickly. And that was a big momentum swing in that ball game for Delta State. It was. You know what? We had uh, we were playing pretty good football, and uh, Delta State was very powerful on offense. They've got a lot of weapons. They got a really good quarterback. He was putting, the, you know, and, and spreading us out pretty good. And they're able to run the football a little better than they have in the past, uh, at least over the past three years. So it was a challenge for our defense. And, and, we, and we started to adjust and play better in the second half defensively. But offensively, we were moving the ball pretty good uh, in the first half. Moved it pretty good in the second half, but we had some uh, mistakes you know, as far as turnovers go. And a lot of those had to do with Delta State. They created those turnovers. Uh, and some, some things we could have done a little bit better. But yes, the, uh, when that injury came, when, when Stephen, he's okay, by the way, and, and, uh, but it was a kind of scary, kind of scary moment. I tried to put myself in the parent's shoes and, and uh, I was out there on the field, so I knew that everything was gonna be, I didn't know, but I, I, I saw him move in a little bit. Uh, and he was talking, communicating, and I knew it was for precautionary reasons. But everybody else, even our players on the side, were worried. And uh, it takes a little bit out of their the steam they had going. Uh, and you know, it showed just a little bit. But we did come up with a stop right then. Then they punted the ball. And we were unfortunate. We uh, dropped the punt and muffed it. And they got it and went on in and scored. But we did come right back and scored again. So we didn't just fall apart immediately besides the, the, the one drop there. But, uh, you know, as time went on, it, uh, it wore on us, and, and uh, they just started to stretch the lead out. But the offense itself was clicking pretty much all night long, the 557 yards of offense, the most of 10 seasons for a Choctaw football team. And yeah. It was those turnovers that really were the killer in the game. It was, and I think sometimes when, you, uh, when the score gets uh, not out of hand, but knowing that you can score fast, and knowing that we had, we had one drive that was one play. And so, we wanted to uh, fight to the end. I've been preaching to the guys about playing for 60 minutes. And, you know, if I started to uh, just run the ball and try to not make a mistake, I wouldn't really be living up to that motto. And so we wanted to um, continue to fight and continue to, to do what we thought we had to to score. And, and, it, and it resulted in um, a little bit too much for our guys. And, and you know, we had some turnovers. So. That was, that was not good, but we did. We had some yards, which was, which was great to see, but you know, you want to win uh, the ball game. And I think, you know, that, that is a big number. We could have had even more if we wouldn't have made some mistakes. And I know we get to evaluate the film and our players know where they could have, we could have capitalized on a, an open receiver or, or a missed block or maybe not a turnover here and there. And we could have had even more yards and more points, which would have made a difference in the game. So it wasn't just about uh, the turnovers. It was some other things too that that may have. It would have been a high scoring game, but it was it was uh, th that's that's the way it is sometimes. You know, a couple of a uh, couple of miscues, notwithstanding from this last ball game. I think Sharon Wright, Sharon Wright is making some really good decisions at quarterback this year. He's he's playing smart football, and that's been one of the keys to his success and the team's success. Sharon has been really good. He's uh, you know I would say he was a dual threat quarterback. He's able to run the football too. He has good vision. When he's running the ball, he moves around a little bit, throws a good ball. And, uh, I, and he had one of those interceptions. That was one of his and uh, out of the three against Delta State. But he has done some good things, had some big plays in the throwing game, in the running game, had some big drives where we moved the ball down the field with a minute to go in the last half of the Cumberland game in the, in the, um, in the fourth quarter. And then at, right at halftime there at Delta State, we drove down and got points. Uh, to put it 28 to 24 right before half, and that was a big drive. Uh, he had a lot to do with that. So you know what, he's doing some good things. We're just trying to continue to grow, continue to get better in his senior year. But this is really, he hadn't even played a full year of football quarterback in college yet. So he's just getting better and better. And, and uh, he'll also be able to hit some passes that he's missed. Um, and that's tough. Maybe the fans don't see those type of things because they are so just a, just a game of inches. And I think he can uh, come up with that. I know he can. And so we're excited to see him continue to grow and get better as a quarterback. You know, we were talking with Coach Edgar Weiser, our assistant coach on mm -hmm. Monday night's program, 
about the offensive line and their play this year, and they've given him pretty good protection throughout the course of the no season. Doubt. And he's, he seems really comfortable in the pocket. He does, and, the, and we've done a good job. That's, that's what you get when you get, uh, well, Coach Weiser uh, and Coach Gray have done a good job with those guys. And uh, they've gotten more confident. But with confidence, that, that comes with a little bit of experience. And we've had more experience with these players. Uh, and that's, that's part of building the program. And so hopefully we'll continue to build on that, you know, in the years to come. But right now we're playing with uh, confidence in the offensive line. When you, when you play in good competition, too. I know Delta State was, you know, as good as competition as we'll see on defense, physical. And they can run and they're talented on defense. So it was good to see us um, be able to match up with them pretty good on uh, in that uh, in the trenches. You know, it seems like every conversation you and I have, Marcel Newsom's name comes up because mm -hmm. he's doing something big, and he had 290 all-purpose yards yeah. on uh, last Pretty Thursday good. night. And it's just hard to deny the, the the talent that he has and what he brings to this football team in terms of his playmaking ability. He is. He's really good. Uh, and you know what? He gives good effort. And and. And uh, he doesn't get every ball thrown to him. We're, we're spreading it around pretty good. But he is, um, you know, really talented. So we're going to try to get it to him in different ways. And we hand the ball off to him once again. And, and uh, as he handed it to him, he threw a pass. And it wasn't a very good pass. But that was one <laughs> thing he didn't do, do as good as, he, as I thought he could. But anyway, you know, he runs the ball well. He catches the ball and makes things happen after the catch. we got some other receivers, too, that, that uh, can help us. And they have been. You know, when you come up with – 557 yards and and you know a productive night you know and could have had more uh, it takes more than just one receiver but Marcel is definitely a weapon and I think he helps the other receivers our other receivers and slots help him as well because they're they're weapons as well uh, they can do some things as well but but Marcel has been more productive this season because probably they have more guys that are able to uh, attack a defense which is good Speaking of other players trying to complete a pass, uh, we might want to mention that Matthew Turcott did get a pass completion yes, on the second one. That was a well-executed play, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And uh, you know what? Something we saw on film, you know, just just as we watched the film throughout the week, and we noticed that uh, and they didn't do it every time, but we felt like that when they come to put pressure on the punter, um, that was going to be something that we could expose a little bit. And um, it did. It worked out just like planned. And Matthew executed it in practice. When you do it all the time, it doesn't work, you know. And Matthew, though, did it well as well as he could. It was the best execution, practice included, when he did that. So it had me a little nervous, but um, really opened up for us. And Eric did a good job getting that first down. But you know, those kind of plays. You don't bring them out very often, but those are the kind of plays that can give your team just a little, a little, a little boost of momentum, a little boost of spirit on the sideline. Yeah, you, they were, they were. You know, some of them didn't know obviously that that was going to happen. They had seen it in practice, but they don't really sit there and listen to my call to see when is this going to happen. Uh, but as they watched, you know, I told, uh, of course, my wife. You know, I told her we're going to, we might fake this thing. I don't know when, but she says, you just don't tell me. I'll be too nervous. Don't tell. <laughs> and as soon as it happened, she looked at me and saw that. It was really good. It was fun to see uh, that play get executed properly. Well, we've got a tough opponent this week. West Florida comes in. Uh, they beat Florida Tech. They're 42 to 39 this sure past did. week. And, uh, you know, this is a team that beat the Choctaws. But something else Coach Weiser and I were talking about on Monday night is when you look at West Florida, even though they're a first-year mm -hmm. program, They've had other sports at Division two, yes. and so they didn't have to go through that process, and they've had two springs to prepare for their first season, so this right. is not your typical first-year program. No, it's not. You know what, it's um, um, not trying to build them up too much, but they are uh, in a great location in uh, Pensacola. They're, they're, they're in a good location for recruiting. Uh, the school is, you know, not a private school. It's very affordable. So there's a lot of things that go into play when you start recruiting athletes and the cost of school is obviously always a concern that's why you know each of these division two schools have scholarships to help with that but theirs may go a little bit longer um they, so they've they've they have been very successful in some other sports i know um maybe uh really good in baseball absolutely uh and so that's been that they've been on the division two radar for a long time probably been waiting when are we going to start football and chomping at the bit and so they have done a good job, though. Uh, Coach Shinnick has done a good job recruiting and preparing for the last two years, having two good years of recruiting. 
Uh, we've been running into them on the recruiting trail. Uh, you know, one of those things you kind of wonder, why would a kid want to go somewhere where they're not going to play? Uh, that first year was probably more difficult than this past year, knowing that hey, we're about to play football this year. Uh, we're going to be straight into the Gulf South Conference, no probation. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to win and, and compete. So they did get a kid that uh, one of their quarterbacks, their starter, is from Valdosta State. And so a kid that maybe was, and I know he could play because he played against us in 14. So they've got some transfers, obviously, that have come down, no one that can play immediately, uh, even from within the league. So that's, that's been a, uh, probably a bonus to them. And, you know, Florida, Florida Tech have given up only eight points per ball game coming into that game. So we yeah. know that now West Florida has got a passing attack. This is a big challenge for the MC defense this week. It is. We've had a good week of practice, which was good. And, and I know that uh, these guys can throw the football, though. And they can run it as well. But, but I believe they like to throw it first. The quarterback can, has a very quick release, and uh, he can put it where he wants it, and the guys can catch it. That's the good thing. You throw it, you want to catch it, and these guys can do it, and they're, they're throwing it in all parts of the field, uh, the quick game, the, the deep balls, everything, and he's pretty, pretty accurate at, his, at uh, throwing the football. So it will be a challenge for us. Uh, one of the things, every week's a challenge, though. You know, it's, it's a, um, uh, you got to come out to play. It's, it's the SEC of Division II, and so there's not a, not a game that you can take off. I've watched some games on Saturday because we played on Thursday, so I got a chance to watch the ball games. And you think before the ball game, this team's going to win, this team's going to be dominant. Uh, next thing you know, they're in a, in a dogfight. Uh, every week, every week, you've you got to play your best, and uh, no matter who you're playing. And, so, and that's the same way it is in the Gulf South Conference. So. We, we expect we're going to continue to get better. We are going to play better than we have, uh, more consistent for 60 minutes. That's what we're looking for. And if we do that, I think we'll be uh, able to compete each and every week we play, including against West Florida. With the Thursday night game last week, you got a couple of extra days, at least on the calendar. Were you able yeah. to take advantage of those with your team? I believe we have. Uh, of course, we, you know, won first. They got a little bit more rest. Uh, you know what, we didn't just go straight to practice on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, uh, here's a good thing, you know what, sometimes you need rest physically, but other times also just maybe most, just as important, maybe more important is the mental rest. And uh, maybe get a chance to visit with their family, maybe a chance to visit and just relax. You know, that's the key. And I told our guys, you know, this is not time to go out and be a regular fan and, and uh, chasing around and go and watch another game. Sit down and stay off your feet and relax and, and just take a, a mental rest day and uh, we can get back to it strong, kind of kind of regroup a little bit. So I hope that, I hope that helped us. Uh, you know what, when you lose, it's very tough. I've been a part of teams that uh, have had a loss, but also ones who have won a lot of games. And, you know, everybody needs mental rest. Even when you win, you're, you're uh, trying to win more. And when you're losing, you want to find out why. And so there's always those type of questions. And, uh, you know, we got a good group of guys, and, and they're – uh, just like everybody else, but we got a really good group. I, I believe they're going to bring their best each and every day and continue to grow and continue to get better as players and as, and as young men. Coach, we appreciate your time once again. Good luck in the game. Oh, thank you.